Farming in Australia requires a special breed of person, one who has the courage and determination to harness Mother Nature in her most challenging moods. We have the driest inhabited continent on Earth with very limited rainfall, infertile soils in many areas, and a change in season can often bring drought, fire, or even flood. Our diverse climate ranges from alpine to monsoonal, tropical to temperate, with expanses of desert in the middle. The extremities of dry land farming present countless challenges, which keep them in touch with the force of nature, so aptly depicted in Dorothy McKellar's timeless poem, My Country. You learn enough about farming in one year for it to make a fool of you in the next, and it is this ongoing challenge of the unknown that makes farming a very interesting occupation. We love the land and what it provides. Farmers are always safeguarding their livestock and their crops against extreme weather in order to protect their livelihoods. Horticulture farmers spread their risk by having their crops across multiple locations to make sure all their eggs are not in one basket just in case it floods or they get hit with a hailstorm. Livestock farmers often have station country for breeding their livestock, but finish them at another location that gets more reliable rainfall and has better soils. But farmers also need to protect against the financial market storms that can swing commodity prices wildly from one season to the next. They hedge their livelihood through multiple crop types, livestock types and a combination of these. If you don't do your numbers, you can lose everything. If farmers don't work in harmony with the environment, then it won't be viable for generations to come. They really are the biggest environmentalists Australia has. Andrew Watson and his family manage a highly developed, intensive broadacre farm that includes irrigated cotton and zero-till dryland farming at Bogabri, New South Wales. Despite the cotton industry's reputation, the Watson family have been nurturing and regenerating their environment for 50 years. Chemical insecticides have not been used on their farm for the last 11 years, all quite contrary for a cotton farm. Their property is often the site for doctoral research projects from the University of New England, and their environmental focus has been recognised with Better Cotton Initiative accreditation, which is a global sustainability standard. Their property has frontage on the Namoy River, and Andrew's parents, particularly his mother, began regenerating the riverbanks by fencing them off, removing non-native willows, replanting native trees, and providing bat boxes and habitat for birds. Now, the 17 kilometre waterway running through the Watsons property is considered the most ecologically sound part of the river. Our farmers are custodians of more than 60% of Australia's landmass, but only 6% of this land is arable, suitable for cropping or high intensity farming. Technology is the way of the future and farmers are embracing this at every turn. With high tech machinery, GPS tracking, soil and water monitoring, to the more efficient use of our precious water supply, with irrigation schemes and centre pivot technology, to drones and the likes, farmers are trying to be more efficient. They have to be. Australian produce competes with imported food from countries with lower labour costs and countries that subsidise their agriculture industry, effectively paying people to farm. Waterloo is a family farm with five generations of history, forming the foundation needed for adopting the newest technologies. One of the most unique experiences of Waterloo is being able to stand beside the borehole and listen to the water breaking on itself without the sound of a roaring diesel engine as a backdrop. This experience was made possible by the diesel solar hybrid bore and the 400 solar panels it relies on, installed in a leap of faith in 2015, a world first at the time. This completed the diversification into irrigation from what was primarily a sheep and wheat farm. Jeff and sons Luke and Tim Rethus make up the core of the Rethus Broadacre farming enterprise, which has been going strong for over 80 years in the Horsham district. Both Luke and Tim left their engineering careers to return home to the farm. The attraction of working for themselves, doing something they have passion for, and being able to see the results of what they've done quickly is exciting. Every year they sow over 4 billion seeds in 4 weeks. 
They grow enough barley for 10 million pints of beer. They harvest enough wheat every year for over 70,000 people. What used to take their grandfather two weeks with horses to cultivate can now be sown in two hours. Each year is a new game. You play one game and then work out how you can improve on that game next year. Striving to do more with less is the basis for many of their decisions. This drives them to continually develop, improve and look for new ways to operate that will ultimately deliver a more productive, efficient and lower risk enterprise. Farms collaborating with R&D companies are constantly working on new and improved technologies that are coming to the market every year. This field of technology is the way of the future and very exciting to be part of. There are so many more stories to discover in these two monumental books, with photos that capture the beauty and the rawness of Australian farming, the people and the land they are so connected to. Thanks to them, we have a bounty of food to choose from. They are literally the lifeblood of Australia, feeding our nation. Honour our farmers and enjoy their stories by ordering your copies of the Grower Book Series today.